That's right. What you're looking at here is a brand new vehicle, all new design, at least on the outside, all new design, at least on the inside. Underneath, a lot of the same underpinnings as the previous model. And yes, that includes the hybrid powertrain. And in this video, we're gonna do a quick walk around, show you some of the neat little goodies. But most importantly, I know this sounds crazy, we're gonna show you the back. It is, well, an all new design. Starting with these 20 inch wheels. Now the reason they're able to get these wheels and tires in here is because they made this a much larger opening. As a matter of fact, all of this is different. So if you look, you can see how squared off it is. I remind you of certain other types of vehicles out there that have a very square design, but that's not the coolest part. Let me show you the coolest part. I know it sounds weird, but my hand will disappear. Part of my hand will disappear. <laughs> okay, check this out. I've never seen anybody do anything quite like this, not at least with a car. I've seen them do it with airplanes. So this panel is meant to push in so you can grab and work your way up to the roof. Now you could in theory step on the tire, but essentially what they want you to do is open the door, step on the inside, put one foot there, grab here, and you're able to reach up to the roof. Isn't that cool? Yes, we could talk about the exterior flat panel design all day long, but it's pretty obvious what we have here, right? Very straight lines, much more macho, much bolder, but also larger. The interior volume of this vehicle is much larger than the one it replaces. The overall size of this vehicle is larger than the one it replaces, yet it's still not the largest Hyundai available because that would be the Palisade, despite the fact that this has been redesigned. Palisade is about seven inches longer. Come on on to the back because this is the crazy part. Now we rarely focus on the back of vehicles, even though I, I like to, but we don't always do that. And that's because this is an all new design and they did some really cool tricks in order to make the opening one of the largest in this category, the volume on the inside best in class, and also to make this a far more utilitarian vehicle. And they did that, now by the way, notice these lights? Yeah, they're part of the tailgate. Now normally you're not allowed to do that because the tailgate is something that can be moved as such, these brake lights would disappear, right? I mean, it's up and away. These are brake lights too. Yep. Now, if you look over here, this is actually showing what they did, which is pretty clever. Normally, because you have like a area that's made for where your brake lights would go, you would have this much room, say about 20 millimeters, give or take, that would actually be taking up the space on the entryway to the vehicle in the back. I'm gonna see if I can manage to do this on the first try. And I'm gonna fold these puppies down here. And what's really interesting is that they really, truly, honestly made the back seats fold completely flat. Check this out. All right, I'm putting this down here. This obscures the straps in the back. And I'm gonna drop this and I'm gonna drop that. And they're going down. It's gonna take a minute. Woohoo! That is completely flat, my friends. Yes, you can get a regular bench seat with this vehicle. No word currently on whether or not you're gonna be able to get the captain's chairs in the United States. You're probably gonna get them. <laughs> it's just, officially there's a lot of things that they can't say about this vehicle with certainty until they're done with all their testing and all their numbers. But by the time the LA Auto Show happens in November, we should have a lot more information on this vehicle. So check this out, have a look on the inside. That my friends is best in class space. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty cavernous. Now this one does have two sunroofs. Looks like there's a fixed one in the back and then the front looks like it'll pop up and move. And they both have the shades, the slides, manual shade in the front and a powered shade in the back. Then you have these controls over here, climate controls for the second row and cup holders for the third row. You also have air vents here and USB-C. So they didn't forget about the 
poor little people in the back. Now, I know what you're asking me, and I'm going to do it. Will the fat guy fit in the third row? Oh, you bet he will. They actually came to me and said, hey, Nathan, we want to test this out on you. We want to see if you fit in the third row. No, they didn't. That's a complete lie. But because you guys seem to thrill at the notion of somebody who's 6'1 and 260 pounds creeping into the back seat, well, let's just make that happen, shall we? All right, so let's open the door up and have a look-see. Now, first of all, let me just quickly jump into the second row. Woo! Tons of space. Seats fully recline. Uh, your controls are over here. Yep, that, whoa, there it goes. Wow, it's like being at my doctor's office. All right, now let me hop out. A lot of leg room. And let's see here. I think the button is on top. Whoa, and it just slid forward. Okay, now I'm gonna work my way into the back. And here we go. Whoa, and that's without doing yoga. And this is bringing the seat back here. And I think, there we go. Look at that. So, do I fit? <laughs> yeah, I do. They scalloped the roof right over here. So I have a lot of extra headroom. Now, if I were to move my head forward, I would bump this area, but there's no reason to do that. So back here, yes, two adults can fit. In the Palisade, if you're curious, three people could fit. This is only made for two. Now, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to turn the car on for you, but we are able to show you this, which is new, and this is a curved display, <sighs> technically to the screens. And I think they're 12.3 inches each. So basically, same things here. This is a dual charger. So you could do two phones wirelessly. This is how you shift the vehicle. Check this out. Yep, kind of like their electric vehicles. Kind of park. I don't know if I like that or not. Steering wheel, very Land Rover-ish. I have to be honest with you. A lot of this car is, but in a kind of cool way. Look underneath here, lots of storage, lots. And then for you parents out there, the piece de resistance. Yes, that's regular, but let's see if I can figure out how to make this work. What, what? I just opened the back. The kids can now raid this compartment. That's right. They can actually open this from the back. So it opens the back, it can open from the front. That is really nifty, actually. All right, there's glove compartment right here. Not a ton of space. And there's a tray here. Now, I believe that's where you can either store your phone, so perhaps it's here, where they have a UV light that can actually de-germify your phone. I kid you not, they were talking about it. Will it be a standard feature? Honestly, do not know about that. Once again, around November, by the time we have the LA Auto Show, we'll have a lot more information on this vehicle. So, final thoughts on this car? It's pretty much all new. And the design, as far as I'm concerned, is revolutionary. This is nothing like I've seen Hyundai build before. So in these videos, you've seen a terracotta orange Santa Fe, and this is the Rockwood Green, which is really cool looking. You know what else is cool? They actually have this floating roof done by using black all the way throughout the vehicle, so you have the free floating color up top. I wanted to show you, look at the front end design. If you look, this really brings it out. This H pattern, this is specifically for Hyundai, as mentioned before, but this line is really cool. It goes all the way across, and I suspect this is going to be a styling cue that's going to be taking over a lot of other Hyundai products in the near future. Alrighty, under the hood. Very similar to what we had before, because we have a 277 horsepower four-cylinder turbocharged engine that puts out 311 pound-feet of torque, and it's hooked up to a twin-clutch eight-speed transmission. Now, according to Hyundai, there will be a front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive version available, but we're not 100% sure on which ones will be available and which ones won't be. 
There's also another powertrain. Now you can also get a 178 horsepower hybrid that puts out 195 pound-feet of torque. That's also going to be available. Plug-in hybrid? So far, no. That might come in the future, we'll see. And with that hybrid powertrain, you get a six-speed automatic transmission. All right, let's talk about what was under that hood in terms of MPG, because it does matter. Now, we're expecting 26 miles per gallon combined with the turbocharged engine, which is expected to be well, around one to two miles per gallon better than before. The hybrid is estimated at 36 MPG combined, and that's going to be around four MPG better. Now here's an interesting thing from the front end of the vehicle. You can actually see that the width is 74.8 inches. That is the only metric that can be measured against the old one because that's the same. Everything else has changed. That's right. Length, wheelbase, everything has changed. Now you may have remembered that the previous model, the Santa Fe, did not have a third row seat, but the one before that did offer that as an option with a particular trim level. So this is bringing back what was old. And at the same time, perhaps it's a little confusing because they have now two vehicles that have a third row seat that are considered crossovers or SUVs. Strange, right? So even though it's pretty much the old vehicle underneath, up top, all new vehicle and an impressive one. And I cannot wait until we get our hands on it. I'll see you guys next time.